Hello viewers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good day. President Bola Ahmed Tunubu set to reshuffle his cabinet with a complaint that though some of his ministers are not carrying out their duties well, that their failure to report the good work of his, uh, his regime is, is unbearable. Therefore, he has to reshuffle the cabinet. And I asked, what is actually the good work that he has done that the ministers are not reporting that makes him want to reshuffle the cabinet? And upon this, Dr. Sam Ahmadi, director of the School of Abuja Political Thoughts, was called upon to come and analyze or give some reason from what he understands the reason why President Bola Ahmed Tunubu wants to reshuffle his cabinet and also to give let the public know those ministers that are safe and those ministers that are not safe. And in this instance, he made mention that yes, some ministers are safe, ministers like uh, yes, some Mwike FCT minister and some other two or three here about ministers which he mentioned that you cannot hear from my mouth. So, uh, that is why I want you to watch the video so that you can hear everything in details. Take a look and I shall be right back. Now the Nigerian presidency has confirmed an imminent cabinet reshuffle, though no specific timeline has been given. Presidential advisor Bayo Nanunga disclosed the plans during a briefing at the State House, but notes that it remains unclear when President Bola Tinubu will make changes. Tinubu, who appointed his ministers in August last year, has also urged them to actively promote his administration's progress. Ananuga said many Nigerians are unaware of the government's achievements as some ministers have been reluctant to speak publicly. Dr. Samamadi, director of the Abuja School of Social and Political Thought, now joins us to discuss the planned cabinet reshuffle by President Tinubu. He'll also be doing an assessment of the performances of the ministers since assumption of office. Dr. Samamadi, good afternoon. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you and good afternoon. Now, of course, President Tinubu's administration is relatively new and this reshuffle is already being considered. Just wondering what you think this suggests about the initial cabinet selection process and the administration's governance strategy. Well, I think two things. Um, maybe first, uh, the way things have turned out, uh, the challenges probably... Uh, they didn't quite get to understand how complex or how difficult the challenges will be. So maybe didn't fit the personnel to the problem. And so uh, better late than never. And so, you know, reassessing the challenges, maybe they, they, find, they fancy some other kind of competences that they need to drive, you know, the economy and the other sectors uh, to, 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 to where they wanted to be. So this could be um, le learning by doing. So midway, you correct course, you upgrade, you review. In other way, you can also say that maybe they didn't quite prepare well enough. Um, they didn't quite excise the level of foresight and rigor in empaneling the team in the first place. So this is, you know, you know, your error catching up with you or presumption catching up with you. Either way, I think it's better late than never. All right. Well, of course, uh, as expected, speculation season has begun. That's what happens during these periods. And I can only imagine the amount of lobbying happening behind the scenes. However, I did read one report that implied that the only ministries that are safe uh, in this reshuffle, or the ministers rather, uh, the minister of the FCT, the minister of uh, works, that would be uh, Dave Umahi, and the minister of interior, uh, Tunji Ojo. This is according to this particular report. Uh, in your own uh, assessment, which ministries would you say should remain untouched? Well, the key, key word there, should, not probably would. But again, uh, we should uh, be in mind that um, presidents shuffle teams for many reasons. Uh, the more rational, we would assume, would be performance, you know, these guys didn't quite deliver or these guys delivered. So performance will be a key indicator. But oftentimes, loyalty and prospective political uh, outcomes. So, you know, uh, this is unfortunately the way we do our own governance. Uh, a year afterwards, you are into politics. So you will might know who stays or who goes may not be determined by performance. But yeah, I think if you look at the, the story or uh, those who are said to be safe, 
there, there could be logic for it. it uh, Minister of uh, uh, Immigration, I think, in, Interior, um, no matter some of the issues about corruption, you know, linked with uh, uh, the, 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 the humanitarian ministry uh, woman, and of course, uh, some allegations about uh, what goes on, what, who gets what from the uh, uh, passport issues. But apart from that, one could say we've seen movement, we've seen efforts, we've seen, of course, also uh, able to engage publicly, communicative-wise. So he's quite done something good enough to say, if you look at this minister, he should stay. If you look at FCT minister, I mean, we've seen upgrades in some of the roads in the FCT in terms of city. Uh, in my view, those optics count. So the, the elites who drive from point A to B and see that you are grading and making smoother those roads would definitely feel, oh, it's working. But then again, uh, just like happened in Portacot, in my view, or River State, you look at the FCT and say, is it transforming? Are you seeing maybe broadbands, lights across the suburbs, security being contained? Uh, are you seeing you know, roads uh, that are not in the city centers being uh, open new roads or upgrade them? This is a time of flooding. Are you seeing proactive management of uh, those impacts in terms of those who live outside the Asokoro, Wuse, Gariki area? In my view, no, we're not seeing any of those. I, I, is this a city having an identity in terms of a city that can attract human capital, attract, you know, in terms of maybe dealing with congestion, traffic, the basic um, city things that make a city the source of wealth creation, the, you know, that make city branded, that brands one city different from the other. People can come in and say, look, this holiday, we would like to come to Abuja from West African countries. Is Abuja becoming that kind of poster child? No. But again, Roads have been upgraded, you know, scaled up, removed uh, remove the surface and redone. So, yeah, those optics. And, of course, the important political work, I think, he's doing for the presidency in, 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 in reducing and almost emasculating PDP. He's a banker to be on that team. Uh, Umaye, arguably, has done better than most, you know, in terms of uh, the many of the roads projects that the government has flagged. There's, there's energy moving around. Is, 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 is doing well with media. It's actually at least reading out engagements, roles they're going to do. Now, after some time, we'll go back and say how well they are done, you know, and so on and so forth. Look at value for money. Then that's when you do more rigorous, deeper review. But many Nigerians and many commentators will not do that. So, Dave Omahe will pass for those who have performed in that context. So, I think those three persons, I could bet my money that they'll be in the team for the politics. Uh, they are close to the president, and some of them have key work to do for the president politically. And they have done more than average compared with others in terms of optics uh, and some level of articulation of policy and program delivery. Duly noted, Dr. Mai. Now, there's some criticism that cabinet reshuffle is more about political calculations as opposed to performance. Just wondering how much of this potential reshuffle you think is driven by political considerations as opposed to genuine performance issues? First, I don't even think they needed to announce that the president would reshuffle cabinet, thereby setting up uh, you know, uh, activities of lobbying and speculations and all that. I mean, we know that some of them will have inkling that maybe that will happen. So that's, that creates a different, you know, dynamics that may not be held. It could have been nice for the printer in inner cabinet sit together, put the papers, and then maybe October 1st or any time thereof, you know, announce a few persons have been dropped. So for me, I, I think it would be, it should be a mixture and probably to be a mixture of both, both, you know, genuine commitment to performance. Look, the government has failed largely. Forget the propaganda. I mean, in, whether it's economic, whether it's social insecurity, whether it's managing the, the diversity, whether it's political stability, there are basically no area I can say this government has really performed according to its promise and expectation. So with that kind of uh, reality that the government is underperforming grossly, that people are now probably comparing it to Boris and or even saying Boris is better. I think there's a strong urgency to fix things, and that will feed into a decision on who to drop and who to get on board. So that would be, I would say, maybe 30 to 40% of the consideration will be on 
performance? How do we rejig the cabinet to get better? You know, and maybe in the area of economy, and that's a sad thing. The, 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 the area is failing most in terms of, you know, you know, high cost of living, in terms of poverty, in terms of misery index, are the economic related areas. But those areas are also manned by persons who are politically entrenched. So where we need the most change is the place we will have the least change, in my view. But again, the bulk of the change will be political. Some of the persons on, on that board, on that team, are not, uh, were suggested, especially those from the southeast, those from the, you know, not the main area that Ashwaju has full control. The southwest team may largely remain intact, except for few. But those that are not directly his appointees could suffer, uh, uh, you know, being considered for removal because the uh, political lightweight really don't contribute much to his second term aspiration. And so we could see some changes in that direction. And maybe they bring in new alignments are happening in terms of politics. So probably we'll have candidates who represent new alignments, new consciousness, no strategic outreaches to you know, areas that probably are critical to a, a, a second term build in a reshaping Nigerian political landscape. So I will give it to 30, 70, 60, 40. 30 or 40 on, on, on consideration of performance and 70 or 60 for political strategic thinking. Right. And of course, having said that, now I guess the next question on the minds of uh, most Nigerians is, are we going to see any change? Does this inspire hope and optimism? Uh, because uh, it looks like more of a cosmetic change of faces. Will this cabinet reshuffle mean any, anything meaningful for Nigerians without a complementary uh, amendment or shift or relook at some key policies that have landed us where we are now? I think there are, you know, three components to a development policy or development outcome. The first is uh, the institutions, the bureaucracy in terms of um, their capability, competence, the civil service, the support staff, the villa. The second are policies that government adopts and the third is personnel in terms of not just the regular civil service, but also in terms of the policy makers and those that will implement it in key agency processes and commission. Uh, it doesn't seem to be we're going to see much change in the personnel at the level of political appointees, not just ministers now, but I think most of the offices that are critical to drive economic development and social outcomes are manned by persons who consider close of, with, the, with the president of his political family, mostly from the Lagos uh, boys and girls, quote unquote. Uh, and um, the, not many of them are fit for those positions they hold in terms of grinding out very quality policy and project programs. And so that's a problem. So we might see a ministerial change that clearly gives or gives rise to talking points in terms of politics and communication, but does not really you know, deal with the issues, or the problems that the government faces in terms of policy choices, okay? Are we gonna pander to the IMF, World Bank, or are we gonna be very smart to, to use the market to govern realistically to, to think broadly around outcomes uh, and to face policies, difficult policies, in a manner that suggests deeper knowledge about political economy. Are we going to see that happen? Maybe not, that you have to get the right policies and the persons who have the right understanding of the policy. Um, are we going to see now a government that is not, maybe more effective in implementing the policies that are maybe good or even arguable, but are wrongly implemented? Are we going to see that happen? That will require strengthening so some of the Parastatals and agents and commissions that are very critical to driving policy change. And that will require a basic shift of political calculations and basic shift of mindset from too much politics and you know, loyalty in terms of those who are my people towards a broader focus to development. So the problem for uh, predicting what presidents do is you don't know which of these variables is highest on the calculus. Is it performance? I just really want to you know, end my first term with a plus. Everybody says, look, they have tried. Or is it the, uh, the variable of politics? I, I just want to make sure by all means that I decimate the opposition or that I, you know, create a political wave. Or is it loyalty that are against with me? So each of these variables would rate differently to different presidents. So the point then is, if the president really, the focus is to get better outcome, then he may have to 
not just the ministers. Uh, in a political setting, oftentimes the ministers are just honorific. They, they, they don't, they, the policy guys at the villa, I always argue, but the president's staffers who design policy, who advise on basic framework of policy, maybe in the present democracy, not maybe, actually are more important for determining how government runs than the, the ministers who deal with the outcomes. You know, when policy has come out, they try to implement it and maybe bring feedback. Yes, they, they are important, but more important are the chief of staff and those staffers who see with the president and decide on direction of policy, direction of economic policy, show policy. They are, you know, that's where you look at the strength that the president has. And for me, um, it doesn't look strong. Welcome back, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I believe you have watched that video, you have heard for yourself. And in this video, I want to ask a question. Why is this man pushing to reshuffle his cabinet? Seeing that the ministers are not carrying out their duties well by not reporting the good works that he has been doing, that they are busy promoting uh, partners, castigating his name, and all of that. And for this reason, he wants to reshuffle the cabinet. And I ask, if he reshuffled his cabinet, those new people, what are the good things that this, he is expecting these people to report? Anyways, that is why I have made this video so that we can all get aware and get set, you know, uh, or rather get ready for him or, and his new ministers that he will appoint to come and give us a report of those things he claimed are the good things that he is doing and that they are not talking about it. Thank you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, for watching this video to this very stage. And I want you to please subscribe to this channel if you have not and hit the notification button so that you can get every update of my uploads and whenever I am streaming live. You know I love you, right? I love you and I know you love me too. Stay blessed as I am blessed. <laughs>